What's going on guys, my name is Elden Hero and welcome to the Midnight Hour. This is going to be the pilot episode of my highly anticipated uh, podcast. This has been in the like production for a long, long time, or at least the idea of it. Uh, this is a project that I was really eager to work on for a long time and I got a lot of... Um, when I put the idea out there, I, I got a very positive response from everybody. So um, this is the first episode and remember like if you don't like it, or you think it, there could be some things done differently, remember that this is just the first one. And a lot of the times with projects like this, you don't really understand their identity until further on down the line. Um, the background imagery will be a series of pictures that I thought were pretty cool. I, I found them on Imager one day. Uh, I'll try and leave a link to the folder that I found them from, if I remember, in the description. Um, and like, I'm working on that. I'm trying to get some kind of equalizer or uh, visual effect for the background because I don't want to use gameplay. Um, my first guest is a guy by the name of Jack. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, he's you. A lot of you would probably know who he is. He's got a few thousand followers on Twitter. I'll leave his Twitter link in the description uh, in case you guys want to go follow him. And our conversation is about guilty pleasures. It's starts out talking about um, pop culture related things that you sort of feel guilty for liking for no apparent reason just because of the the, the, the stigma attached to it um, in the way that your peers view you and then it, it stems from that conversation but it goes to something much more deep than that um, in so far as it explores things that actually genuinely make you feel proper guilt so um, I'm gonna get out of here now you're gonna listen to the conversation that me and Jack had and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it if you do please do leave a comment or a like or any kind of interaction with the video itself just to let me know how you found it um, and like whether or not it's the type of thing you want to see more of so uh, with that out of the way here's the conversation hopefully you guys enjoy uh, I think there's like three types of so-called guilty pleasures um, there's things that you really liked as a kid that you were part of the target audience for maybe or maybe that like you experienced as part of another experience like for example if you're watching a movie and there's a song in it that you really liked or even if it was something like hair metal or glam rock or you know like new metal in the late 90s that it was like a moment in time that everybody from that era has spent the like has spent every moment since then trying to forget but you're sort of you automatically have some kind of affinity or personal bias towards it uh, the, the, the blunder years basically yeah pretty much like for me i'm 23 and it's definitely new metal like the f the fact that i wake up some mornings with limp biscuit in my head is something that i can't really experience without feeling like slightly hating myself for it mm, I, I i think mine's mine is probably if we're if we're talking like that mine's probably my was probably my dubstep phase oh but, you had a dubstep phase oh yeah i had a big dubstep phase which was half interwoven with my heavy metal phase so that was a really awkward time in my life wow that sounds really confused <laughs> <laughs> i cannot imagine that but uh, mm. the, the, there's there's another like there's some things that are less easy to explain why you like them. Like if anyone asks you 20 years from now, like say you're watching MTV History, which is probably going to be a channel when they combine the two to show things that are neither music nor history. Yeah. But uh, like they'll be talking about dubstep, and people from the next generation will be like, "Wow, I can't believe people thought this was music." You'll feel a slight urge to defend it, like to sort of stand up for yeah. it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. And that's like that's easy enough to explain because you were there for it. But there are other things that are not easy to explain. For example, like why I sometimes sit in my room rocking out to Katy Perry or Kelly Clarkson or something like that. Um, things that are universally hated, but you feel the need to, or maybe you just just happen to like it. Uh, I, like I think Kelly Clarkson's choruses are fucking awesome. Like she's a strong, independent woman, and she don't need no man. Like no, I can't disagree with you. You know, like. It's, it's funny with her because Pink is all like one minute she's like really sad and miserable about her life but then the next minute she's really happy and she doesn't need a man but then she's singing about how sad she is that her man is sad with yeah. her and Pink Pink, uh, Pink is uh, too too sassy for me I'm a uh... I'm, I'm, I am more of a Kelly Clarkson. I'm more on Kelly Clarkson's side when we come into yeah, I think so these too. these big issues, as it were. Yeah, I, I'd be the same. Oh, did you know this is a side note? But did you know that she records all of her songs and then she makes like a country version of it, and it goes exclusively to the country music charts and all. That is 
No, I, I did not. I, I have no way that... How do you know this? Because uh, that... I was looking at all her videos on YouTube and uh, in the related links, there was like the country version. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, if this is Conway Twitty or something singing this song, I need to hear it. <laughs> and uh, now she actually does like a country version of, of each thing. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah. th- there are, there's another type of guilty pleasure that is one that isn't actually referred to as a guilty pleasure. Like, And that's something that actually genuinely makes you feel guilty and not something that mm. you would be scrutinized for liking. But I think we'll talk about that a little bit later. Mm, yeah. Um, for now, I, I, I sort of like want to talk about music and uh, movies that I mm-hmm. like that I really shouldn't like. Um, yep. There's a couple of songs from bands that were like barely even acceptable at the time that I still don't mind hearing. Uh, like There's one, Larger Than Life by Backstreet Boys. I think that song is like a metal song written for a boy band. I think someone needs to cover that with like some heavy fucking drums and like two guitars and flames on stage and I think it would work. <laughs> um, but that's one of those things that I feel like I'd get ridiculed for liking. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, speaking of, speaking of the Backstreet Boys, you've got uh, I want it that way, which is I, I think even Dave uh, Grohl confessed recently to liking that song. It's hard. It's hard not to. It's such a an annoyingly good tune. Yeah, it like, is, isn't it, it? It's really, it's really hard not to. And then, um, oh, what's the uh, Uptown Girl? Their version of Uptown Girl. Oh, you really like that song? I really like that song. Oh yeah. man, I hate that song. <laughs> <laughs> as if, if there's a, a couple of my friends who really like Billy Joel as well, or Billy mm, Joel. Yeah. I sometimes say Billy Joel, but um, and, I'd, I'd go with Billy Joel. But yeah. Yeah, well, he sang that song and. I, I don't know there's something just I think it's just that it's too cheesy for me but I also think it's because I associate it with the previous generation like I don't associate it with the Westlife version from 2001 or whenever it yeah. was like yeah. I hear the I hear the 80s cheese or maybe it was the 70s um I don't, like you know the you know All Saints mm-hmm. they've got a song called Pure Shores which yeah. is genuinely one of my favorite songs of all time, and I literally don't even care if anybody thinks that's sad. <laughs> like, I will defend that song to the death. I think that's an awesome song. Yeah, I'm, I mean, to be honest, there's every every now and then I'll go for a phase of listening to the old uh, the old Good Charlotte songs that I've still got in my. Oh man, yeah. Yeah, the old Good Charlotte songs that I've still got in my iTunes, and because I mean, I've I've taken all all my songs that I used to have on my laptop when I was, you know seven years ago when I was yeah. 13 and I've brought them all with me every time I've changed computer I've done the exact same thing and it's it's awful really yeah it is looking, looking back I mean I'm, I'm scrolling through some of them now and it's just <laughs> oh dear it feels like a little bit of a mental regression like mm. you want to sort of just wash that out of you like it shouldn't be yeah. what was that what was the what was the Good Charlotte album uh, The Young and the Hopeless I think so yeah oh man like I'm thinking about some of the songs on it now, and that was a terrible. Like, that was objectively garbage. But I yeah. fucking ate that up at the time. Oh yeah. I remember me and my cousin used to play like Need for Speed, and we would have that album on on repeat. Yeah. And now I feel a little bit sick. <laughs> those, those were the bad times. Yeah, I mean, there's there's always there's always going to be. The, I mean, to be honest, there's songs even there's songs every week that come out that you listen to and you kind of go. That's yeah. That's pretty. That's pretty good. I, I quite enjoy that. Yeah. But I really, really shouldn't. I I have a bet. Like your your own music snobbery almost comes into play, saying no. I've I've I'm better than this. Yeah, I I am definitely I, I'm, above this. I'm I'm be- I'm better. I'm better than this generic pop shit. Yeah. God damn, is it catchy? Yeah, it fucking is. It's it's probably the mm. worst thing. But I like I yeah. I really I, I respect people who can like that and not give a fuck about what anyone thinks yeah i sort of think that they're in a healthier state than i am if i get mm. all hung up about like it is like it is a stupid thing like why should i feel guilty about it yeah you know why should i be unhappy with myself or well like, that's kind of a, a stretch a little bit yeah. dramatic but, uh, <laughs> yeah no it's really weird there's there's actually there's a series of movies that we spoke the other day about it that there's definitely a community out there who will make you feel bad for liking these. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah, definitely. The original, well, sorry, the newer Star Wars trilogy. Yeah. With uh, Natalie Portman and Hayden Christensen. Uh, I think I think the main reason, like, I really liked episode one when I saw it in the cinema. And yeah. this is, like, a lot of people will hate me. I'll lose a lot of respect for this. But I saw that movie <laughs> nine times in the cinema. Um, in my defense, I was eight years old. <laughs> and I loved it. <laughs> 
uh, like for me, Jake Lloyd um, was, I think he was the same age as me or maybe a little bit older at the time. So to me, it was mm. like, you know, I could be a Jedi Knight type feeling. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't believe that, but it was that, you know, it resonated with me in, in the sense that it was a little boy who... No, of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, but like watching that movie, I had no idea about any of the you know the senate and the trade federation and yeah <laughs> all of these political disputes the, yeah the social commentary that was going on yeah that, that little eight-year-old you couldn't see yeah, yeah a very ob- i only watched these back recently and uh the, you remember uh Watto, the guy who sold or the guy who owned uh shmi skywalker and anakin skywalker he was yeah, yeah so he was quite clearly a, a jewish stereotype Mm. And I never knew that at the time, <laughs> but I watched them back recently. It was it was the first time in like ten years or more that I watched these. Yeah. And he had that hat on, and he had the whole like just Jewish aura yeah. going on. Yeah. Ah, oh, that was um, like that was dark. I can't believe they. Yeah, went I there. mean, I mean, even even on even on a smaller scale, I mean, watching watching Toy Story because I mean, Toy Story was released in what ninety three. Yeah. Uh, no, was it? Yeah, maybe it? actually. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it was ninety three, but um, you know, that was that was the year. I was, oh, it was ninety five. Um, yeah. that was the you know, I was two years old, so I didn't see it for another few years after that because otherwise I wouldn't be able to remember it. Yeah, because I saw it in the cinema and I was yeah. I was trying to figure out if I would have been in the cinema and remembered when I was yeah. three years old. But. but um, but yeah, I mean, I you know watch watch Toy Story back and you know there's a lot of pop culture and social references you know from around that time I mean even Toy Story 3 having watched it you know when it came out in the cinema yeah. there's there's um there's the reference when it, you know there's a reference to Mission Impossible oh really at one point yeah when um there's, there's a scene in it where Woody goes up in you know on a on a on a kite and falls um through branches of a tree le- uh, you know branches of a, a low, like a small tree yeah and just before he hits the ground his um his little um voice activated thing gets caught on a branch and he lands just above the pavement with you know with his arms and legs oh, out oh yeah that's the whole right beat. yeah wow. so you know I mean you know even you know on the on the the less you know politically uh demanding stage you know there's a there is there is still like you know there's pop culture references everywhere yeah and I mean you know that's that's one of the things that that a lot of films do that are that can be enjoyed by kids and adults and yeah i i sort of i had a theory um this is kind of getting off the point but i had a theory that Hmm. the more pop culture references in your uh work of art like the more it'll harm you because the less staying power it will have because the next generation won't be able to relate to it but i did not i didn't pick up on those ones in toy story Hmm. but if toy story is doing that like that. No, I mean, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of, well, I say a lot. I can't, I can't really think of any examples off the top of my head. But I know a lot of Pixar and Disney films do have a lot of, yeah, you know, and a lot of them are biblical references as well in terms of uh, certain things. Pixar is pretty unique in the sense that it's never had a box office flop. Mm. It's never had. Anything. I mean, the closest that they came to was was uh, Cars a, or Cars Two Pixar. Yeah, I think so. That's the closest they've come to a box office flop and. That's still probably did pretty well. Yeah, a, a lot of people know. say Shrek too, and I love being the guy who points out that it's DreamWorks and not Pixar. Yeah, <laughs> makes you seem like you know everything. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I I didn't know that about Toy Story. I but going back to Star Wars, um, like watching back Episode One, I think I think there's half a good movie in there, and I think um, there's a lot of improvements like from the original trilogy, like the lightsaber choreography and the sort of martial arts element. Um, but I watched Attack of the Clones, which is episode two, and I really didn't like it. I actually thought like they took a wrong turn in that in making Anakin so angsty. Like he was just such a little bitch about everything. And it's Hayden Christensen who, like, he gets a lot of hate, and I'm kind of okay with that because he's not amazing or anything. But um, I, like, I think he did the best job that was available to him or whatever. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, how can, how well can you do with the direction you're given? Yeah, but he was so angsty in that movie, and it sort of really put me off. And th- there was a lot of really corny dialogue that I didn't notice as well. Yeah, there was there's one part in I think it's episode two towards the end when um they're they've been captured by Count Dooku and they're on the I think it's Geonosis is the planet that they're on and they're all it's just before all the Jedi in the galaxy basically come to help bail them out and they're in this sort of gladiator like uh, battleground. 
but they're chained to these pillars. And Natalie Portman, uh, who I, I will never refer to as Padme, she's just Natalie Portman. She played herself <laughs> yep. in that movie. She's an incredible woman. But uh, she, like, untied herself and climbed to the top of the pillar. And Anakin said, like, what about Padme? And Obi-Wan goes, she seems to be on top of things. And then it cuts oh. her and she's literally on top of a thing. Oh, oh Jesus. I, I just, like, cringed a little bit just yeah. hearing you say it, let alone seeing it in the cinema. I couldn't, like, I was watching it and I was like, holy shit, is that the level of intellect that Star the th- Wars... The thing, is, the thing is, you know for a fact that there were writers sat there as they wrote it patting themselves yeah. and clapping each other and just going well done lads I mean really fantastic job with that line that is he scribbled out that, that, is, that line that is genius like, and dropped the pen and just went yep yeah, alright we're done look I'm at this done. shit this writes itself <laughs> like oh man it was so bad but um yeah. then like uh, after like I thought like episode 2 was pretty shoddy but you know what the the next one uh, Revenge of the Sith I thought it was one of the best mm. ones in the series I actually thought it was better than the original um, episode four, A New Hope. Mm. Like I thought, Revenge of the Sith was a really good movie. Yeah. Um, and like I can't say that to certain Star Wars fans because they will like I don't uh, want to. Yeah, like they will just be Star like Star Wars fans are. Some of them are in, absolutely insane. If we're if I'm honest, I mean there's yeah there, there is no there is no limit to how mu- how much detail how much pedantic detail they will go into oh, to know. try and change your opinion. And how much they... Like, Jake Lloyd, who played Anakin in the in episode one, he's not an actor anymore because he no. got that much hate. Like, he was, like, nine or something, and and they're all like, oh, my God, this Ridiculous. kid can't act. He's like, he's fucking nine years old. Of course he can't act. He can't do anything. He can barely tie his own shoelaces. Like, But, I mean, speaking of guilty pleasures, I mean, in terms of film, just, you know, stepping away from Star Wars slightly... I've got, I've got to say, my, my, not even specific films, my two big things, because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm preface this by saying I'm a film student, so I mean, you know, I'm surrounded by people that are very high and mighty and very full of themselves, essentially, in terms of their knowledge of um, the best, the best quote unquote best films of all time, yeah. and, you know, from technical perspectives, yeah, and like, stuff like a, that, a but, movie uh, purist, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm. I'm endlessly, I endlessly enjoy rom-coms and musicals, yeah. and one of my favourite films that I've watched several times is Pitch Perfect. Really? And, yeah. That's the um, Anna Kendrick one, right? Yeah. I have to and, say, that song is absolutely infectious. It's brilliant. Yeah. Like, I love yeah, that. Yeah, like, and that, that, that film just combines my enjoyment of musicals and rom-coms and puts them together in, you know... I I just really enjoy it. That's definitely a guilty pleasure. But, yeah, that is that is definitely probably one of my biggest guilty pleasures. But I can sit there and watch them, and just really really enjoy them. What like, what's um apart from musicals like what is a rom com that you really like? I'll see if I've a rom com that I really like. Uh, Crazy Stupid Love. Oh yeah, that's with um. Ryan Gosling. Uh, Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, yeah, uh, Steve Carell. I watched that. I thought that movie yeah. was alright. I didn't think. I yeah. thought it was. I, I think it's slightly overrated because Gosling is in it so mm. like people have given it like, I mean it has something like an 8 on IMDb which yeah. I don't think it deserves because like if it's a no. guilty pleasure it, it doesn't deserve that much of a no not at all but uh, no that was a decent movie I quite like yeah. it when Steve Carell actually acts and he acts, like yeah. he doesn't pl- well that that's actually not really fair to uh, what he did in Anchorman like he is amazing but I mm. prefer him being himself or sorry no, I prefer yeah. him being a character that we're not familiar with yeah. And not just have you seen? Goofball. Have you seen the film? I think it's called Get Smart. Uh, I've. That's the one where... with with Steve Carell. Is he's a he's a like a hapless. He's a hapless CIA agent or something from like 2008. I think it was. Is, uh, is John Travolta Dan... in that? Yeah, I, I think he is. I think I saw it, but it didn't. It definitely didn't leave like a. I I probably saw bits of it like. What? But uh, yeah, that's that's another film that's pretty pretty well not I say pretty lowly rated. It's still got more than six in IMDb, but yeah, that's a film. That's a film I really enjoyed as well with Steve Carell. Have you Speaking seen um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall? Yeah, that's a brilliant movie. Mm. <laughs> I fucking love that movie. I think that is an incredible movie. I think Russell Brand. Like I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence with Russell Brand. I don't know if I like him or not. I think like sometimes he's just so fucking goes out of his way to be so articulate and appear smart. Yeah. Like, when really all he's saying is, I put a banana in a tree. Like... Yeah. He... I mean, I've seen a lot of things when it... 
like I was, you know, seen videos of him on American talk shows and on news panels and stuff like that, and it's like he's going so out of his way to be that, like you said, the, like overly articulate Brit that is yeah. so much smarter than everyone else around him, and it's like, you know, there's there's a there's a to- there's a point where it goes from being, you know your natural uh, cadence of speak yeah. to being you almost showing off. Yeah, it's you know? it goes from eloquent to pretentious very fast mm. for him, I find. Yeah. But um, he, him in that movie, like, I think the fact that I can take all of my hatred and, like, bias against him aside and appreciate what he did in that movie sort of points out how good a movie that is. I think it's really fucking good. Mm. And I think, like, some of the dialogue in it, when, like, when he's arguing with Sarah Marshall... And she's just like t- pointing out how all of his tattoos are bullshit. Like, this is Buddhist and this is Muslim and all. Like, this doesn't make you a citizen of the world. This makes you full of shit. And then he just goes, "I fucked the housekeeper yesterday." <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It was just the perfect line. That that movie is incredible. I, I mm. would you count that as a romantic comedy though, or just a comedy? I, I guess I guess I would actually. Um, yeah, I, I, I suppose I suppose so. Yeah. It's hard to sort of make yeah. that distinction, I guess. I I think like yeah. if like I think that movie would be okay to like, but a movie like like the opposite end of the scale, something like Mean Girls, would be a guilty yeah. pleasure. I I also thoroughly enjoy Mean Girls, so you know. <laughs> I I once tweeted I, um saying anybody no any guy who quotes Mean Girls is definitely too gay to function. <laughs> and loads of people replied to me saying like yeah man I fucking hate people quoting that movie I don't know what that's all about like they're definitely gay and I was just like yep got away with that one <laughs> only few people will get that joke but uh, uh, I like I have seen that movie um, Yeah, I think it's alright I it's definitely one of those movies that's seen as kind of you have to be a girl to see it but uh, mm. I've definitely seen it and I thought it was actually okay oh yeah that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good guilty pleasure um, oh yeah so you had you made some really interesting uh, guilty pleasures that actually take you out of this um, feeling of sort of, sort of uh, being afraid of being scrutinized for mm. liking what you like, and this sort of actually takes the word guilty pleasure and I think applies it in the correct term that it was initially meant whenever it was you know formed. Yeah, it's 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 the the ones that I've uh, the ones that I've, I'm, I'm about to mention are, are less of a they've got less of a social stigma was surrounding them. Well, they they have a social stigma to to an extent, but not the same social stigma that many people think of when they say guilty pleasures. Which is kind of bizarre in a way when you think mm. about it because like well, go on and, and say what it is. Oh, I mean, um, I'll, I'll start. I'll start with one, and we'll go through that, and then we'll get on to the second. But yeah. I, mean, um, I think the first one, seeing as that I am, I am, I've, I've had a couple beers already. Um, I think it's appropriate that we start with this one. Yeah. But um, you know, I mean, I'm 20 years old, and I've, I've been able to, dr- I've been legally able to drink for two, the last couple of years. But I've been drinking since I was, I mean, you know, not just a beer at dinner with your parents, but you know, going out and getting. So drunk that I forget since I was about fifteen. Yeah, you know, fourteen, fifteen, um, which I don't condone in any way. It no, ruined of a lot of, it ruined a lot of my, um, you know, social experiences. To be quite honest, but yeah, I mean, a big guilty pleasure of mine is the buzz. Simply, like, simply the buzz that I get from drinking. You know, not even, not even drinking to excess, but I. It's not that I crave it. No, of course not. But it's... I, I really, I really enjoy the slight buzz that I get after two, three, four bottles, pints of beer. You know. Yeah, I, I absolutely um, love a pint. Hmm. Um, and like uh, me and me and one of my friends, uh, he works late, and sometimes like he'll get off at about half ten, and we'll meet at the pub and have a few drinks and just discuss everything from football to movies to yeah, you know, like stupid trends going around Twitter or like whatever. Hmm. And it's it's a lot of fun, but. Uh, the guiltiness for me, um, or the the guilt even is guiltiness mm. a word. The guilt comes uh. in when you you never know which beer is going to be the one that sends you over the edge, and I don't mean mm. over the edge onto a rampage where you beat the shit out <laughs> of everyone in the pub and leave and pile of glass and blood everywhere, but uh, the one that sends you to like you can get the munchies or like say you you have that beer so you're a little bit drunk and then you go outside and then you go and you order a Chinese and you come home and you wake up the next morning and that's when the guilt sets in when you look at your wallet and you're expecting like 25 euro and you see nothing in it and that's a horrible feeling I I, I hate that that's just that's just the uh, like you know uh, monetary issues with 
still, I'm still, I'm at, I'm at uni, so I'm still at that that age where every now and then I will go out and get drunk to the point that I'm texting friends, going, "So last night was good? Yeah. Bad? Yeah. I don't remember." So in terms of today's society, I mean, that's, I mean, you know, the older generation will look down and say, you know, being UK's binge drink youth and stuff like that, but it's not abnormal. No, I don't it's think not so. Ab- it's not abnormal behaviour at all. And um, but then I still feel that that's that's completely wrong. It shouldn't be. Yeah, I, I think at all. that's this. That's what's so funny to me is that we're talking about this, and like a lot of people, I, I think who are listening will be sort of will, will have turned their head at the idea of alcohol being a guilty pleasure. Mm. To like the fact that like if I listen to a Backstreet Boys song, people are going to be like, "Wow, that's fucking weird," and I'll feel a sort of personal sense of. Um, maybe like my character has changed or how I appear to other people has changed but I can go out and drink 10 pints and like and stumble home from work and fall in the door and like I can hurl abuse at everybody and everything and that's acceptable that's acceptable as long as you wake up and you know you've no, no real damage you know real damage is done yeah it's ridiculous but I mean you know I mean pe- pe- people all, I've, I've, I have mentioned this in the past to to friends and and you know, um, especially the whole the whole alcohol thing, it'll be oh, but you know, you know, it's it's not as bad for you as you know cigarettes, and it's like yeah, well, you're if you're gonna if you're gonna take that, we're go, we're going you're taking that from a study that puts an alcoholic against a chain smoker, and it's like oh, you know, a glass of red wine every day, you know, is 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 okay for you, you know, it's meant to people who have a glass of red wine or a couple of beers live longer, and it's like well, well, yeah, but I'm not having a glass of red wine or a beer yeah one one beer every day i'm sculling you know. 10 pints and beating the you know, shit out of yeah. my mate well not really but you know well, yeah yeah i'm you know I'm, I'm necking i'm necking as many pints as i can physically consume before throwing up and then stumbling home to make myself a burnt ham sandwich and i don't know how i burn ham sandwiches but, uh, <laughs> that's one of the things that you can inexplicably manage when <laughs> drunk that's one of the main reasons why you shouldn't <laughs> binge drink yeah. you burn ham sandwiches watch what's that, out what's for that, that? Bi- What's that part of um? There's there's a there's an episode of The Simpsons where Homer's a uh, Homer's a chef, or I think from Mr. Um, Burns. Mr. Burns, and he goes to pour his cereal. Yeah, and, and it, it catches on yeah, fire. Yeah, that, that's an incredible scene. Yeah. I love that. But um, that things like that. I've had you've probably got this ahead of you because I'm older than you, which still mm. amazes me, by the way. If anyone like has ever seen Jack, he's probably about eight foot four, and I am like a dwarf next to him. <laughs> but um, yes, like. I have started to have, over the last, I'd say, year and a half, well, maybe a little bit longer, maybe the last two years, I've started to have two-day long hangovers, and that is just not, like, a hangover is probably the worst feeling you can have where you're Mm. perfectly capable of functioning, you're just, you know, like, you're just broken, you you don't really work, you're dehydrated, Mm -hmm. everything is amplified, everything is trying to attack you you get that sort of that fear where you feel like your skin itches but it's someone else's yep. skin and that is just such yeah. a real serious side effect of alcohol that isn't really mm. discussed um the way that it should be i think no i, I mean um i mean you say you say you, you've started experiencing like two-day hangovers yeah. but i mean the closest i've come to that is because me and, my, me and my friends enjoy going... Because, you know, I've got friends spread across the country and even across Europe to some extent um, that are at university and are work placements and stuff. And, you know, every now every now and then we'll try and find a weekend where we can get, you know, 30, 40, 50 quid return flights to wherever or a coach or a train and go and see my mates and that I haven't seen in a couple of months and get ham- like basically get drunk for two days straight and consume an inordinate amount of beer. Exactly. Same and then thing. and then you know I've, I've come home like i mean the recent, most recent one was frankfurt and i think we exceeded i personally exceeded 40 pints in two days jesus christ yeah it was it was dreadful that is um, bad and i came back and on the on the monday um you know i had i had the full on hangover and then on the tuesday i was physically shaking yeah and people were commenting how pale I looked. Yeah. You know, that's a serious well, alcohol withdrawal symptoms, basically. I, I think it says a lot about the culture and the mm. environment as well. The fact that that is not a deterrent. Like, no. That will not I mean, stop me from, like, drink. I'm probably going to go out tonight and have a few pints. Like, it's, yeah. Like, and the, um, the thought of a hangover will never cross my mind. No. I mean, at one point, at some point during the night, you'll kind of think, should probably get a glass of water with my next pint. Yeah. 
try and offset the hangover. But by that point, by the point you kind of figure that out, it's too late. Yeah, it is. You know, you're well into dehydration and hangover territory by then. Yeah, that that is something that's like really fucking awful that I I don't think gets discussed enough. And whenever it does, mm. it's with sort of uh, patronising and condescension in the way mm. that it doesn't actually help anything when it's brought up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, saying saying about getting a glass of, uh, you know, uh, ordering a glass of water as well as uh, with your pint, just to, uh, you know, so, you know, to help hydrate you. Yeah. I mean, I've I've ordered a pint of water and a beer at a pub, and the bar the bar staff have said, oh, who's who's drinking the water? Yeah. And it's like, well, I am. Yeah. Fuck off. Don't don't you have <laughs> some sort of like responsibility here to yeah. like facilitate this? You know. Yeah, I, I I understand that you're facilitating me getting drunk and that I'm I'm facilitating your ability to go and get drunk yourself by essentially paying your wages. Yeah. So come on, have a bit of understanding. Yeah. Be less of a dick about it, basically. Yeah, yeah that is a weird one. Um yeah. you you had another interesting one as well, apart from mm, alcohol. which which I mean which I mean kinda of, it kind of uh, links hand in hand. Yeah it does. I mean yeah, 'cause um it's 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 gambling. Yeah. And it's not. It's not. You know. Um, oh, I put an I put an accumulator on for football this weekend. You know. It's. It's not that. It's going into a casino, and you know, taking forty quid, you know, thirty, forty quid, and converting it into chips and playing till either you've lost it or you're level again at some point. Yeah, and it's and, it's a buzz for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. I mean, uh, m- me and my friends recently. I say recently within the last couple of months. Our, our game of choice has been roulette and there, you could argue that there is no worse of a game that you could really play that's than the one roulette. with the the green the, is the yellow the and then it's green, green, uh, well no the, or, there's sorry, green uh, sorry it's the, green it's the is wheel zero. The, ru- the roulette wheel green is zero yeah. and then you've got red and black why did I say green is the, the yellow where did that come from I have, I have no idea that's very, but, um, if green is yellow <laughs> then up is east and yeah, oh, yeah. that's very strange but, but yeah, yeah roulette, but is, a, roulette, roulette is, is good is, yeah, roulette is chance, 100%. There's no there's no skill at all involved in roulette uh, un- apart from nope. point pointing on a on a board to say I want that number. Yeah, and pigeon superstition you know. as well. Yeah. Yeah, that that's see, that's been our game of choice for the last uh, two three times that we've been. And we've always been pretty hammered drunk when we've been cuz it's at the end of the night when all the pubs have closed and it's like don't want to go home yet. Casino? I have to say yeah. that is kind of like an exclusively uh, British problem in Ireland mm. <laughs> I don't think that the I don't think that these two things are good enough to cancel each other out or whatever I think they're both <laughs> bad enough to be bad in their own respects mm. but in Ireland uh, like the pubs stay open a lot later than the UK mm. so you don't yeah. have to go to a casino to a casino yeah, yeah but you don't have to go to a nightclub either you know you don't have to make that choice between mm. overpriced beer and losing my money on gambling or yeah. shouting at my friends while sculling a vodka Red Bull and being yeah. rejected by lots of women and stuff like mm. that you know yeah but um but yeah i mean it's it's a, it's an awful thing i mean i mean we've been lucky enough to work out a, I, I say this with great trepidation but work out a system and, um and so far i think from the few times that i've been with my friends we're all up in terms of coming out of the casino yeah you know we haven't we, i haven't lost money yeah I, uh, in the casino but i mean it's such a dangerously enjoyable thing to do I, I'm up from the casino as well anytime mm. I've played uh, I went to the one that we went to in uh, in London yeah um, I went there once with another friend and we were I was sort of I was sort of um, my friend was playing some card game that I don't know what it is and, mm. and I was just sort of sitting there like I wanted a beer so I was having a beer and I, I didn't really know I'm not so experienced with gambling outside of sports gambling Yeah. and uh, my friend came over and he was like here just take this 20 quid I've just won it I don't need it take it and uh, play something and then just like fucking just enjoy yourself or whatever and I, I we had like a back and forth I didn't want to take his money and then I no, just yeah. I took it and I said right I guarantee you I will give this back to you later on tonight and I went and I played roulette and this is probably not the type of story that anyone should draw inspiration from because I can't stress enough how much of a fluke this was but Mm. um I, from when I was drinking and and looking at the roulette table, you know how they have those t- TVs at the top that show you previous yeah. results. Mm-hmm. I swear to God, some weird fluky way, I predicted two zeros when they were happening, Oof. and I didn't gamble unless it was on a zero coming up. So I did that a couple of yeah. times, and I was up massively. 
and um and then i started going for red and black on different ones and stuff mm. and uh, i ended up like i came away from that night with like 112 quid which isn't really a lot for the type of casino that it is mm. like people in there would piss 112 quid no yeah but um like I, I came out with that i gave my friend back the 20 quid and we went home and, and i was up for the night and that was a fucking yeah. that was a good time and like that that buzz of going holy shit i've look what i've just done i've just made all this money yeah and it was so easy yeah all I had to do was stand here, drink a beer, and put some chips on a table. Yeah, it's a. We, this was so easy. When we went to the casino with Sophie that time, mm. that exact thing happened to her. Yeah. And she put the money in and then just won yeah. like what was it like seventy quid or something? It was something like seventy quid. Yeah. Yeah. That that's just that's how it happens sometimes. I've always been I've always been careful. I've always been careful to the point where because they've got cash machines there and it'd be so easy to go in, go in with a certain amount and go. Oh well, that's gone. Yeah. Could just get some more out. Yeah. I've done so that. It's always been a it's always been a no no when to walk away kind of thing, but I mean that buzz is so captivating, enticing, and captivating. That yeah, I know exactly yeah. what it is. It's it's definitely um like I I mean we have casinos in Dublin. There's even one in Swords, but it doesn't entice me because of the fact that there are other things available to me. Like there's the pub available, and I do most of my gambling online on Betfair, where um. I just gamble on football accumulators and stuff, but I have been like at the end of my wick financially and just gone like fuck it, six euro left in my account. Let's throw this into my betting account and try and win. And I've gone broke like so many times because of that. But uh, like having said that, I like I don't want to come across as if I've got a gambling problem because I'm actually I'm up. My winnings are something like two thousand percent higher than what I've put in. So. Like I'm, I'm doing a, a good job on on gambling in general, but um, like it, it has been a negative source of, like it, it's been a source of so much sadness for me at some points as well. Just a little public service announcement, as it were. I mean, as much as we've talked about the that that buzz that comes from that we hatefully enjoy. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not a good road to go down. No, you know, it's you you re- you really have to know your limits. If it's the last 20 quid you've got in the wa- in your wallet for the next 3 weeks, don't just don't like Yeah, you'll hate yourself. <laughs> yeah. As much as you'll enjoy that 5 quid win when you've got 3 quid left. You have to set out some rules as well. Like rule number 1 that this is a newly found rule number 1 that only applies to this season. Never bet on Man United because they will only let nope. you down. Oh yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. rule number 2 never bet on Liverpool yep. or Newcastle. Unless they're playing each other, never bet on Man City away. Yeah, yeah, that is a good one. Fuck yeah. knows what happens there. Um, never bet on any Serie A team ever. No, nope. especially Juventus. Always bet on Bayern Munich. Yeah, that is a good one. But, but, ne- but never over two point five goals because they fucked me with that against. Uh, <laughs> I forget who. The, I think it was Augsburg or someone, and they only won two nil. And it would have given me like forty five quid. And this is the guilt that we're talking about. Is this part? Like the pleasure is the gamble and having a look at the scores, keeping it all alive for yourself. But oh my god, I felt so shit about myself. I put like a tenner on a lot of over two point five accumulators, and uh, when Bayern of all the teams, Bayern Munich, Pep Guardiola's Bayern Munich fucked me. <laughs> uh, arguably one of the best teams. In, well, arguably the best team in the planet right now. Yeah, literally. But yeah. Unbelievable. Mm. But um. Moving on from gambling, uh, there was one that I sort of, it sort of came to me this morning, um, and this is one that I think a lot of people are going to relate to, uh, and that's just quite simply staying up really late for no apparent reason other than the fact that it's just nice to stay up late, and uh, and I don't really know what it is. I've tried Googling it to find out why. Uh, I found that supposedly intelligent people stay up later but i kind of say that's bullshit because you have the you have the feeling that those kind of reports are written by people that stay up later yeah exactly yeah yeah my, my, probably, my, written, um, probably probably written at 3 a.m yeah as well yeah <laughs> my 100 percent legitimate scientific study mm. has found but yeah um th- there's actually like there's even a wikipedia page for it um supposedly we are called night owls or evening people um <laughs> which i reject both of those titles because they're both <laughs> fucking like just lame but um yeah like i find that there's 
the best time to be creative and, and like let your creative juices flow and, and come up with new concepts and new ideas and even just explore new things like uh, movies that you would never watch or listen to albums that you would have never bothered to listen to before like that time between 2 and 4 a.m that's the best time to to get stuff like that done and i don't know what it is i i think maybe it's because there are no possible distractions like no like a postman isn't going to come to the door with your delivery uh like nobody's going to call to your house with anything your mom's not going to call you downstairs for dinner or not that my mom does that but you know like i think i think those are some things that just make that time a little bit more valuable or um what's the word uh, time that you cherish a little bit more it's going, probably going back to when you were much younger there's everyone always had a bedtime yeah you know, you always had a, a bedtime, you know, even if you weren't asleep, you had to be in bed at this time, you had to be in bed at a certain time, and I think there's all, you know, not a conscious, but there's almost a subconscious level of, almost rebellion against that, maybe. Yeah, I think so. You know, so. There's, there's, that, there's that kind of, there's that part of you that thinks, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm up past what normal people are up past. Yeah. You know. I'm into this special zone that no one else. I, I can do whatever uh, the fuck very, I want. Yeah, yeah. I, I am. I am an adult. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think that is definitely a part of it. I I know when I went to college, it, it all sort of started for me. Well, I actually had like I, the word insomnia gets thrown around a lot. Like I, I didn't have a couple of nights where I stayed up late. I had a legitimate problem going to sleep when I was a teenager. Um, and I, I'd, I'd watch like loads of nighttime TV and uh, from doing that I actually found a lot of TV series that I like but uh, it was a really bad time because you pay for it the next morning that's where the guilt comes in is that like it's actually for all the people who who do stay up late like I have bad news for you it will fuck you over um, oh yeah th- there's I, I I researched why we go to bed at night and like why we sleep through the night and be awake at day and supposedly it's this thing that even babies develop uh, naturally called uh, the circadian rhythm um which is it's present in all plants and, and all biological like they all have their own sort of uh, natural state of of sleeping and waking and things like that and uh I, I didn't find out why, but um, I know that that's what the thing is. So, you know, it, it's just, it's it's a natural thing that people have always done. Like, the sun source, like, uh, serotonin comes from sunlight. Just being out in the sun, like, serotonin is a positive chemical in your brain. I think it's, I think it comes from your pineal gland. I'm not sure. But uh, either way, your body senses daylight. It senses light. It's drawn to light. Uh, light is a positive influence on your on your mental health which is like quite a funny thing but if you stay up all night and you sleep all day and then you stay up all night like it seems like it will have no effect on you because you don't really notice a shift in mental health or, or a shift in your happiness or just your basic overall satisfaction or anything but that like combined with just the fatigue of having uh, a strain i guarantee you everyone who stays up late you don't have a a rhythmic sleeping pattern where like you don't stay up till four and then wake up at 12 every single day like there are some days where you have to be up earlier than that just because it's something that you do um and that's like all of those things combined means that for those of us who do stay up late like there are just weeks of your life that you sort of lose out on that you'll never get back that you were either adjusting back into normality or quote-unquote normality um or, or else you were you were sleeping through something or you know it's it's just a, a real sort of bad place to be in even though it seems so worth it do you have a netflix subscription oh yeah right oh, so yeah. like if you've ever watched a tv series on netflix when when it finishes uh, one episode it'll come up at the bottom and it'll say next episode plays mm. in 10 9 and you watch it count down and you know you should do something to stop it but you look at the yeah. time and you're like well, like, no one's going to tell me to go to bed, so mm-hmm. I'll, I'll watch one more episode, yep. and then the next thing you know, it's 48 hours later, you're still awake, and you're you're waiting for Jericho yep. to come back on TV, because you found out it was cancelled. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, but, um, you know, going back to um, you know, this, this whole serotonin thing, we also get, you know, uh, I mean, vitamin D is from, you know, vitamin D mm-hmm. is actually our main source of vitamin D as humans, is the sun, is direct contact with sunlight. Yeah. Exactly, um, and I mean, you know, that that is that is a main big component in, you know, growing essentially healthy bones. Yeah. But and you know, just a anecdotal story: the fact that for a year or maybe two years of my life, my sleeping pattern was uh, wake up at seven a.m. 
uh, to go to college or whatever. Yeah. And this this is this is during the week. Wake up at seven a.m. to go to college and then, you know, come back from college and do what do whatever until four a.m. Yeah. And I I was I was having three hours sleep a night for a good a good year. Yeah. And it really took its toll. Like my 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 weekends, I wouldn't have weekends because I'd go to bed at four a.m. Friday night and wake up four p.m. Saturday. Yeah. I I just wouldn't have weekends. And it feels really demotivating. Yeah. At the time, like you feel sort of like uh, like unclean, like y- like as if you're just doing everything wrong. It's like it's like even even when I had those big twelve hour blocks of sleep. It didn't. It wasn't revitalizing. It wasn't like I woke up after a night's sleep. You know, I say a night, a, you know, twelve hours of sleep and felt awake and you know, refreshed, re- wanting wanting to get my you know homework done or whatever, or wanting to go out and yeah, you know, do things with my mates. It was like, uh, I'm awake. Oh, this is this is shit. Yeah, I'm I'm still tired. Yeah, uh, you know, and it it really does it really does hit hard i mean i'm you know i i do understand that some there are morning people and there are nighttime people night people like i i i i've i've i'm not i'm not per se a morning person but i can get up when i have to yeah like uh, when I, once once my alarm goes off it's kind of like all right time to time to get up and live my life and get get through today if it's not something that i don't want to do but like i i do understand that there are people where waking up in the morning just isn't their thing just like uh, something biology biologically in them i, I think it says no i think it's uh, like a combination of a lot of things um i know like i've spoke a lot of times about how you know like i just don't like buses i like i'll get a train anywhere i'll get the tube anywhere i'll get a taxi anywhere it does not bother me but for whatever reason i am terrified of everything that every single part of the process of getting on a bus and going from a to b like it's i don't even want to go into it but there are just so many things in my head that could go wrong um and it really it puts me off getting a bus um and i I don't know why that is like it's i'm sure some doctor can sit down with me someday and, and talk to me about it but that's a legitimate thing if if the option is available to me even if i have to pay a little bit extra or do whatever i will avoid the bus at all costs and I think for the people who struggle to wake up in the morning, it's probably something similar with them. Not in the sense that they just really hate the morning, but they really hate what they have to do that morning. And if it is possible to avoid doing it, they will avoid it and they'll take an alternative. Um, and that, that kind of that doesn't really give um, a reasonable excuse for them as such. But I think it's that mindset of... I don't like this, so I'm going to do this instead. I, I think it's that searching for an alternative that might not be socially acceptable. I think that's what drives it. Yeah, I I, I understand completely. I mean, there there, is, there has been more. There have been mornings where I've 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 woken up, I've laid in bed, and all I've got in front of me for the day is a day of you know I've got a twelve hour shift at work. Yeah, and it's like I could just. I could just pretend to be ill. Yeah. Like, this is so comfortable. This is where I would much rather be. But then, and I, I think I think that you kind of you kind of grow out of it. You you do you do grow out of this you know thing of being a morning. It's not that you grow into being a morning person. You just grow up to realise that you have responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. You 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 kind of feel you there, there is that. And, and then this is part of this could be part of the guilty part of it. You know, is that pleasure? And I've I've called in or you know emailed my lecturer when I wasn't feeling too chipper in the mornings and just said, oh yeah, sorry, you know, don't feel too well, so I won't be in. And they said, oh all right, no worries, you know, hope hope you feel better because you know I'm at university, I I don't have to be there. Yeah, exactly. And then later on in the day, you know, like an hour later, and I'm kind of sitting there going, I'm, I was comfortable for the last hour, but now it's kind of like. I should have just got in. Yeah. I don't know what I'm. I don't know what I'm missing. I'm paying for this. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm. I'm. I'm paying. I think it worked. I think I worked it out, and it was like sixty quid a lecture. Fuck. Essentially, because my my uni bills went up to nine grand a year. Oh shit. Yeah. So um, and it was like, well, I'm paying sixty quid. I've I've missed a hundred and twenty quid's worth of university experience today, just because I wanted an extra hour in bed. Yeah. And that you know, and there was that there was that bliss, that absolute bliss. Where I've never felt happier to be curled up in my bed, and then there is the guilt of it. Yeah. Just thinking, well, shit. And that's the real killer. 
Yeah, because no, no one's, no one's here to stop me from doing that. That's the thing. When I was in college in Scotland, like, it, I mean, it was, it was amplified uh, by me. Well, maybe not so much, but I think the fact that I was in a different country by myself, like, I was living in a flat by myself, and I'd come home from college. Like, this was what Sunday nights. I used to never sleep anyway because I've always had. Uh, I'd say Sunday is my natural enemy. It has. You know that Sunday evening feel where you can't do anything, you can't commit to anything because you have to be up in the morning. It's like, it's just a cunt of a day. It shouldn't exist. But, um, like, so there were Sundays were just fucked anyway. I'd get to sleep at, like, four and then get up at, like, half seven to walk to college and that was fine. But I'd come home on a Monday. I'd usually be too tired to do anything, so I'd probably go to sleep early, which is an even bigger way you can fuck up your life is have a nap at, like, 5 p.m. That'll really fuck you over. Um, so I did that and then I'd, um, I'd be up at like 11 and you know, this is where you get to the stage where like you either cook something or you order a takeaway and you watch Family Guy on BBC Tree and then you eventually end up watching Mock the Week on Dave or Jeremy Clarkson or something. And then the next thing you know, it's 4am again, you're slightly tired and I've had so many days where I just could not break that cycle and it seems like laziness and it seems like demotivation and stuff, but it's just a general, just a it's sort of a pathological urge to just stay and just be and just live in in that current moment and act as if there are no consequences to it and it really fucked up a lot of my education like thankfully i went to what was essentially a fucking like a barbershop college where i just you know i walked in one day and put a couple of, like i don't know buy a couple of crisp packets in the university and then you get your degree but um it was like a a really sort of <laughs> reckless time for my uh, circadian rhythm which is what the the whole thing is called like that natural uh, cycle that keeps everything in line and i don't know i i think maybe the f- like i think there's going to be a generation where um night and day won't matter at all like it will all be the one cuz i i think we're slowly getting there like th- there's a lot more um what's the word there are a lot more compromises being made with people who do night shifts and things now and, and they're sort of like it used to be the the case where even if you had a late job and you slept through the day people would be like whoa you slept till like 5 p.m like wow this is this is the end of the world what are you doing with your life um but i don't know i, I think there's a a happy medium to be found in it like mm. i mean I, th- I think we're the way that we're really the first generation that has that whole being you know things to do being up all night yeah because especially especially with the internet i mean the internet i'm, I'm not going to go as far as saying it's ruined us but <laughs> it, it kind of has in a way yeah you know? it does well I, um, i'd say it what what it has done is um distorted or disrupted the you know quote unquote normality or just mm. the what we would consider to be yeah like this what we're doing like now is it like say like if it's half three in the morning and, and we're talking on skype while watching netflix like 20 years ago people would look at that and just be like wow they are wasting their lives they have got no prospects in life and nothing to live for they may as well not exist and that's very sort of strange i th- i think we all still have a little bit of that in us and that's where the guilt comes from i mean beyond all of the health um you know yeah, consequences that really do make your life hell when you stay up all night but kind of kind of a segueing slightly away from the uh, uh the, whole, the whole sleep this whole sleeping and not sleeping guilty pleasure thing i mean uh, i i i've got one of the, one of the one of the things i've got written down as one of my guilty pleasures and this is a slightly more trivial one but it's um it is with the whole internet thing i mean it's uh, it's the red reddit the website oh yeah um reddit and imager i mean I've I've been using Reddit for about two years now, I think, or something like that. I'm not able and to use Reddit; it's too incoherent for me. I I just I don't know what the hell is going on on it. Ah, see, I think it's I think it's so simple. I see. I think I got onto the internet a little bit earlier than you did. Yeah. Like I was part of the internet that had to uh, use a HTML program to put my own background on my MySpace page, whereas I think you're probably part of the internet that went on a website and downloaded it or. Oh yeah, I went on a website and downloaded it. Yeah, yeah. So that's but, um, I think that's where that comes from. Is that I yeah. sort of have a more I, just a, a sort of a naturally different way of of, mm. of looking at things on the internet. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, the guilty the guilty pleasure in Reddit. And I, I, you know, for the first year or so using this website, I I wouldn't acknowledge the fact that 
you know, if someone said, you know, do you use Reddit? Because it was kind of, I saw it as a kind of, this is, this is, this is a thing that the nerds of the internet it, use. Yeah. And then, but then I've, since I've then, I've come to terms with realising I am a nerd of the internet. I am very much one of those things. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. But, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things on online that, you know, just using various things on the internet that I feel like such a, there's there's that thing like where I I've been watching YouTube videos just just a YouTube video of someone playing an Xbox game and you know just a, you know a standard a box standard commentary nothing nothing sexual not challenging anything just a just talking about the game they're playing and my parents have come in and it's up oh, tab out yeah it's like you know oh, don't want to be, nope watch not watching that I'm normal you actually you actually I'm, you go out of your way to tab into porn into so they porn. don't think yeah. you're weird <laughs> yeah. I'm not weird Dad I promise look. <laughs> Yeah. Look, lesbians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, I, yeah. I've, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I feel that from actually making the videos. Yeah. I, I uh, when I first started making videos on YouTube, I actually I hid it from my friends so much so that uh, my my Twitter account Aldenero90 has always been my only Twitter account. I, I was never. Mm compelled to make a personal one just because I, I don't really want to or whatever but I went out of my way to block every single friend that I could find mm. like I searched their name into Twitter and I blocked them all just so they would never find out who I am and uh, mm. like one of them eventually found out and then all of a sudden my WhatsApp messages were why am I blocked on Twitter why am I blocked on Twitter and I was like ah fuck um, and like oh, it turned out that one of my friends had told everyone that I made YouTube videos and yeah. even like a lot of people uh, at the start were like that's really lame like how many subscribers do you have mm. like 600 but now I'm closing in on 20,000 and I feel as if mm. it's perfectly fine for me to be like yeah I do that I have 20,000 subscribers what do you have to say back to me like yeah um, I, I think the guilt um, I, I think it like your like the reddit thing I think the guilt mm. from doing things like that is is being drained like pretty fast I, I think yeah Oh yeah. I think we owe a, um, a debt to uh, uh, maybe the Big Bang Theory for making nerds cool. I don't know. I, I really yeah, hate I, that show. I don't think it's funny no, at all. But I, uh, I I think it's the forced laugh track that does it. Yeah. Have you have you heard it without the laugh track? Yeah. It's it's, it's just the pause, it's the pauses that are most the most awkward part about it. Yeah. But it's just that the humor is just like the jokes aren't really that mm. good. No. Yeah. Uh, the jokes on that show are the kind of jokes that are semi-intelligent yeah. and let the person sitting there watching go, ha, I'm smart but like them because I understood that reference. Yeah, that's and true. It's like, yeah. mm, no. It's like an but, in-joke um, for a university student. Yeah, yeah. But I've actively, ha two, three, four years ago when I started watching YouTube videos and stuff like that, you wouldn't talk to your mates about... You wouldn't say, "Oh yeah, I saw this. I saw this YouTube video. It was, it was, it was really enjoyable." He's got a whole channel, and he does all these kind of commentaries and stuff. Yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't talk to your friends about that. No. Like, you, would, you just, you just wouldn't. That was essentially social suicide. Yeah, it really was. But, hey guys, but, listen to Chris move with this auto tune laugh while he like yeah. fires his AC one thirty at a bunch of noobs, and people just look exactly. at you like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Exactly. Like, I mean, on on the base of it. Seriously, listen to this guy play a video game that I could play, but he does it slightly better than me, and he's funnier than I am. Yeah, it's it's brilliant. I I I adore it. <laughs> Basically, that's we that is still weird. It is. Like, you know, anybody but uh, but un anybody under about the age of thirty mm, would look at that and just be like, mm, that's a bit, that's a bit weird. Yeah, you know, I I'd say even even younger than thirty, I'd yeah. say, but like there are a good few people who are definitely like breaking out of that now yeah uh, like the yeah. the tide is definitely turning in that sense mm. in in favor of like the so-called nerds as it were yeah yeah but it is really interesting how like i've like now that i've never realized this before but since you mentioned it like i have never ever like i have been watching chris smooth videos since the year 2011 maybe even before mm. that like since he had about thirty thousand subscribers yeah and I have never mentioned it to any of my friends, no. apart from the ones that I know from the internet. But yeah. none of my real life, like you know, natural friends that I've met in real life, no, yeah. like yeah, I have never ever said, yeah, I was watching this guy play Call of Duty because that would just be like, wait, you were what? You were playing you, Call of you Duty with your friend in his room, watching him play it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was he was next to me and totally not doing it three days ago. Yeah, on, on the internet <laughs> with, yeah, with auto tune. Yeah, like even kids that are 
three, four, five years younger than me, under 15, will now, they actively talk about what YouTuber they're watching and who they think is the best at Call of Duty. And it is more of a, I wouldn't say social, um, but it is more of a spoken about thing. You know, just you can just go down year by year and you'll see how much more it becomes a just a more accepted thing to talk about just between friends even not even on you know Skype or on online just in in real life in the classroom I think it's true I think one thing that really helped um like YouTubers cause and stuff is the fact that a lot of YouTubers have those big viral videos like the mm. uh, the ladder goat guy like oh. who has like you could show that video to and you could show that video to your dad and he would laugh his head yeah. off like that is yeah it it's the contagious laughter in that video. Oh man, it is just too funny. And as soon as we stop doing this, I'm going to look it up and I'm going to laugh my head yeah. off at it because it happens yeah. every single time. It's so oh, fucking I amazing. I I think I I just I just love I just love the lead up to it where he's like, "What is that? A deer?" Yeah. What what is what is that? Is that a deer? Uh, oh. Is that a donkey? <laughs> I mean, the accent helps as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, without a doubt, but that is, you know, that video is phenomenal uh, to be honest. It's sort of like it's almost endearing no pun intended that he that, that's a star wars like yeah it was endearing <laughs> yeah but uh it, it's it's the fact that he finds that so funny yeah. that you just you understand almost but it's such mm. a unique thing that he would see a ladder or a goat walking up a ladder in a, a video ladder. game yeah. and think that it's anything other than a technical glitch he actually yeah. just loses his shit like and if anyone watching or listening to this hasn't heard ladder goat just Mm. just google search ladder go it's the funny yeah. the, it's safe for work and all of that it's just <laughs> oh it's ridiculous it's the it sounds like such a dodgy thing doesn't it like yeah have you seen ladder go yeah ladder go yeah yeah i did i watched it after i watched two girls one cup yeah <laughs> but yeah but i mean yeah have you seen have you seen the uh the um the promo video for goat simulator yeah, I have. Uh, <laughs> I watched that, and my first thought was just, "What the fuck? What the hell this is, is this?" The, the ladder goat guy needs to get a hold of this game. Oh my <laughs> god, yes! It was probably made for him. Like, I'm sure he could probably get a free copy of that just based yeah. on his oh, goat oh, exploits. Yeah, definitely. But that, I think, those big videos like that, they really help the cause of the YouTuber because it makes mm. like the casual viewer, or maybe like the not even casual viewer, like the. Uh, you know the this the person that doesn't really care about youtube or whatever yeah. like they'll see it floating around facebook or whatever and yeah, then they'll yeah. go looking for more videos and i think that's probably how it happened i, I think i've no, just yeah. come up with a viable yeah, explanation yeah. as to the increasing popular popularity of youtube videos and yeah, stuff that, that, i mean you know uh, smartphones probably help as well i mean you know i've seen i've seen kids that are 13 14 with iphones yeah and you know, if you if you've got access to YouTube on that, you know, it's so easy just to show your friends and just say, "Hey, look at this." Yeah, I've I've and, done you know, that. I've been I've been almost almost literally shove it in their face instead of just sending them a link. That's the thing. And, hope, and hoping that they might watch it instead of lying and just going, "Haha, that was good." Oh man, I, I have this thing where uh, I I don't really do it so much anymore because it's a lot harder to get away with now. But if you're mm. talking to someone on Skype with the text chat and they just yeah. if they send you any link like and then you're supposed to click it and then talk about it like what i used yeah. to do was i used to just not click it because i used to just be too busy and, I, and i'd reply saying yeah that's good but i prefer their older stuff <laughs> <laughs> like i swear uh, to god 90 percent of the time it was perfectly appropriate because the person would go like, yeah you're right yeah 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 their first their first album was so much better yeah I, I, yeah i love songs like the view from the afternoon on the first album <laughs> but this one's good too like that's usually what what, yeah. what what people were linking you but now i like i've been that guy in the pub and the corner with his friends um watching youtube videos like mm. i mean with the sound not entirely up because no, yeah. let's face it we're not wankers no yeah. but uh yeah I've, I've been there i've done that and it's definitely yeah. something that's gonna i think um in the future like pubs would do well to have like an ipad at each table you know that's sort <laughs> of automatically yeah. part of the property or something mm. i mean i'm talking like 20 years but i think that no, will yeah. be a, a thing because i have i have been to a i have been to a pub where they had a, they had a couple of tables that were um they were like these old these old style they had um like joysticks oh no way and you could play things like pong on them fucking hell the, the old little table tennis they were like you know see-through glass and stuff like that and they had a, they had a crt tv facing upwards no way and uh, you could play like Pong and simple like Donkey Kong and stuff like that on them. And those were those were pretty fucking awesome actually. Yeah, that sounds class. Yeah, I've, that was pretty good. I was out in Leicester once, and um, mm. 
in I think it was a scream bar. I'm not sure, but they had um time crisis just yeah. just standing there in the corner like instead of like the fruit machine and yeah and uh, whatever else they just had time crisis and fucking house of the dead or whatever like I'm obviously going to go and play those games yeah, Th- yeah. those are fucking amazing games to play and like mm. it, it I think every pub should get rid of fruit machines and put time crisis oh, yeah. in there oh definitely cuz that would be amazing mm. fruit machines actually kind of tie it all back to the whole gambling thing as well yeah, yeah my another one of my my guilty pleasures is one of the things that I love no better than to love is uh speeding oh uh, interesting yeah now I, I don't i don't just mean like i i i hate i hate being a hypocrite and i i actively try to avoid being a hypocrite and i think that speeding you know you know going at a stupid speed in a car is just well it's stupid to be honest it's reckless it's endangering not only your own life but a lot of other people around you so i don't I don't go over the speed limit when I drive, but what I cannot get enough of is that bit getting up to the speed limit. Oh yeah. When you're from from a set of lights, flooring it and getting up to the speed limit as fast as you can. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know that 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 kind of like dra- almost a drag race by yourself. Yeah. To get up to the speed, you know, the the speed to get to the speed limit, and then you know you come off the come off the gas and gas fucking hell you come off the accelerator and you know you're back to doing just doing the speed limit and you come off the gas and then you uh you come off the gas and you go to dunkin donuts and yeah you find a stop sign and <laughs> yeah all that good stuff yeah. but yeah i mean it doesn't even just stop at uh driving i mean you know because I, I ride a I, I ride a bicycle to 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 uni and you know i sometimes i do it just for exercise you've attached and, an uh, engine to the back of it just to uh... yeah I've uh, well you know, when, you know I just eat beans before I go out yeah. and, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah I mean even that I mean there's a there's a big there's a big hill there's a big downhill section because um, I've got a road bike and there's a big downhill section near my university so I mean I can go out there climb the hill and um, head on the downhill and I've hit because I've got one of those little uh, computer things on my bike that tells me how fast I'm going. Oh no way! And I, I, th- I think I hit. I think I hit 45 miles an hour going downhill. Fuck! Yeah, That's fast. N- uh, yeah, that is terrifying. Yeah, that is fucking like some, if you hit anything right there that knocked you off yeah. your balance. I mean, like, if, yeah, I was. I'd be yeah, fucked. I mean, fucked. I, I wear a, I wear a helmet and all that, but there's nothing to stop ro- the road rash and potential broken bones and stuff. Yeah, that's fucking. But yeah, I mean, but then there's, there's that thing of look. There's that thing of looking down and the you know. Literally, the wind is whipping at whatever you're wearing, and you know it's, and it's just you know you're just hurtling down this hill at the mercy of the elements, almost. Yeah. You know, a strong side wind will not do anything for you. You know, I mean, and there's there's just that almost addictive nature of speed, and I guess to an extent it's an adrenaline junkie type of thing, but. You know, I'm I'm not one for massive heights, so I can't go climbing buildings like a Ukrainian or a Russian. Oh man, have you seen those with the like the base jumping oh, yeah. off buildings in Russia and stuff? Oh yeah. That's... Have you seen Have you seen the one recently where the two Ukrainians went and climbed the Shanghai Tower? Yeah, I have. That is they, fucking crazy. They didn't. They didn't even have parachutes. They climbed back down. Yeah, that's nuts. <sighs> Which is, that's just all. Oh, no, oh, I I. You know, it's the kind of thing that makes your palms sweaty and makes you go a bit nervous just watching. It's sort of like, yeah, it's I, I don't, I'm not afraid of heights. Like I've I've been to the I've been to the top of the Eiffel Tower and stuff. Um, I don't like it, but it's I, you know, looking down is like I'm not afraid of falling. I'm afraid of jumping. It's it's that it's it's you're actually afraid of what you can control. It's it's like if it's like if if you've ever held a gun in your hand. You have this feeling of power where it's like I could just end someone's life right now, and it's that fear of what you're able to control. Like it's it's the fear that you might actually do it. And I'd say when you're speeding, like if say if you're on a bicycle or something, like you probably have it in your head too that you could just do something really dangerous. Mm, I think that's that's the um it's the call of the void. I think in in French it's a uh, l'appel du vide, oh, really? which you know it's a literal translation call of the void, and it's it's just the urge to do something so reckless that could essentially kill you. That's I you really know. like the call of the um, void. That's a really cool. Yeah, word. it's the it's the call of the void. I mean, you know it, and I, I you know I ha- I have it a fair amount, and this is actually you know 
you know, it's, it's a fairly guilty. It's, it's almost a pleasure because you know, I, I I I go I travel on. You know, I've been on Virgin trains a lot, and you know, those are the ones that will hurtle past the station at one thirty miles an hour or whatever. You know, they'll be doing hundred plus miles an hour, and you you hear the announcement that says, "Please make sure you step back from the edge of the platform." Yeah. This train is going at one hundred and twenty-five miles an hour. Yeah. And that thought crosses your mind that just says, "I could jump." I could jump out in front of that. It would definitely kill me. I actually, I don't know that much. like, that's... I actually genuinely believe that vertigo is not the fear of falling, it's the fear that you'll jump. Like, I think the mm. people who... Well, actually, to be honest with you, I, well, I don't know the specifics about vertigo. I know you can get it without actually it being a height thing. The vertigo's a, vertigo's a, a thing of uh, dizziness. That, that's and, right, yeah. And nausea. But, yeah. but I think, well, you know, the uh, the misconception of what vertigo is, I think that is the fear that you'll jump. And, and that train thing, uh, what you just said, is I don't know if anybody else will relate to this. I, I don't think I've ever even really spoke about I've definitely never spoke about it on my channel, but... Um, before I nod off, right? You before well, sleep for me is lying in bed for five hours, uh, reminding myself about all the things I hate about myself, and then <laughs> getting some sleep in at the end of it. But there, I have this mindset where I'll be thinking about something, anything that's uh, trivial or you know uh, creative or something like that, and then immediately, like a train will just come through my mind and flatten me. And that's like, I have this sort of image in my head of being rolled over by a train and it won't go away. And and I have the same thing with jumping out of an airplane for some reason. I just think about jumping out of an airplane. And it it's very like, I, it's very hard to explain because it's not like a, like a flash before my eyes or like, it's just a thought that completely interrupts my current thought process with this sort of really... Um, what's the word uh like distinctive sort of jumping out of a plane feeling and i don't know what it is because i'm not that like what you were talking about when you were speeding um and you like the trill of speeding that feeling i don't really get that i don't have i've never had a daredevil thing about me um i, I know what it is like my cousin has it he's kind of crazy um he like he he's the type of guy that if you tell him to do anything like he would do it just because like i've seen him jump off bridges into water just because like he's just he loves the uh adrenaline and stuff i'm not really an adrenaline junkie i i like reading books and and eating cocoa pops and stuff like that i, <laughs> I, I like uh, i like my safe little comfort zone but i do definitely get that call of the void thing um mm. pretty strongly like i feel that yeah. a lot it, like i cannot be at a train station without having that oh no yeah cycle through my head repeatedly Traveling, traveling by tube through London is dreadful. Oh, it's the worst. Every time you step, you know, or you know, every time you step onto the platform, oh, train coming! I could jump out in front of that. Yeah, and it's it's like it, it's not a. It's it's not even it's not even a depressive no, thing. No, that's, that's not, what I was going to say. It's not a depressive thing. It's just like, well, I could. Yeah. I don't want to, but I totally could. Yeah, it's the fact that you're totally well, in control of. Mm, yeah. And that's kind of a little bit scary, I think. Yeah. Because it's that oh, like I often wonder as well at the tube stop, like if I jump out and just lie between the tracks, will the Tube. Will it go over me without touching? Yeah, yeah. It will, won't it? That's why those. Things oh yeah, are uh, it definitely will. Yeah. Yeah, the, the tube but is a. I, I wouldn't. Place. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I know it's possible, but I wouldn't do it. I'd be. Uh, I, I'd like. I mean, I'd like to try it, but I'd be just mortified with the conversation that would follow it. Like, you know, you've yeah. fall. You've uh, sorry. It appears that you've jumped onto the tracks and survived. Uh, what, like, you know, uh, what happened? Did you fall? And it's like, nah. I just wanted to no, see if I could make yeah. it. Like, <laughs> I wanted to see if I could. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you've you know you've held up everyone's travel plans for the day mm. with your uh, with your tiny little um, uh, curiosity. There is like. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to see if it was possible. But then again, I think if you do something like that, you're not to the point where that would bother you at all. Yeah, I think... The fact that you've ruined everybody's day. I think that's a fair point. Yeah, <laughs> you're that crazy. Yeah. But that, those things that we talked about from the moment that we left pop culture things, mm. those are real, like, those are what should be the definition for guilty pleasures. Yeah. Those are things that are fun but they come with uh consequences that may affect you like psychologically or physically yeah. or and i think uh i don't know i think that was that was pretty interesting to explore um mm. there's one thing i i i want to talk about that i could not find a way to segue into yeah, sure um but this is sort of not really a guilty pleasure type thing uh, as such but 
for the people mm-hmm. who like it, it, it is a guilty pleasure. Uh, well, I suppose it is because you see me like Rebecca Black's videos on, on YouTube oh, yeah. and stuff. But oh, yeah. I, I don't really understand why it's not acceptable to like people like Rebecca Black and Jedward and stuff. Like, and I know, like, there'd be a lot of people listening right now who just went like, what, Jedward, what? Like, yeah. I accept that they're very annoying and stuff and mm-hmm. they don't really have a whole lot of talent, but they do have charisma and they do entertain people. Um, mm-hmm. And I know, like, when they were in X Factor, uh, some Sun columnist, I can't remember who it was, so I'm not going to say any names, it was definitely a guy... Uh, he printed something about Jedward and it said like mm. Jedward are wondering why people don't like them well here's a couple of hints and he was like you're vile arrogant disgraceful like excuses for human beings got it mm. and it's like this is like a 40 year old man with journalistic experience yeah. and he's giving out at some teenagers for trying to be pop stars like for pretty much following yeah. everything that pop culture has told them to do despite the lack of talent like if you want to point fingers about lack of talent like pretty much I could name probably about 10 pop stars off the top of my head yeah. that don't really have a whole lot of talent and um, I just I find it really weird this sort of vitriolic response that we put towards teenagers who are not even in control of the content that they're putting out like Rebecca Black's Friday thing like I don't like she did not write that song wasn't wasn't the story behind that that because um, there's, there's a whole load of things like that you know, there's a whole lot, there's a whole load of not not literally just like things like that. There's there's a there's a whole business made out of you know middle white middle class parents in America that buy the pop star. Yeah, uh, it's called Arc treatment. Arc Music Factory. And yeah, they make their own like terrible. There was that jeans one. Yeah. And... yeah. Oh yeah, and then there was the um there was the uh, what was it the uh, Chinese food one. Oh, I haven't heard that one. Uh, oh, that that one's fantastically bad. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but that's I. I guess um, this is more of a sort of a standing up for what you love type thing or or, or standing up for somebody who like I I think it's really like I don't want to use the word inspirational because I'm not inspired by people who are younger than me typically Mm. but I think if any bully victims out there who are held back because of who they are or whatever look at the example of uh, like say Rebecca Black who got death threats Mm. at the age of 13 I Mm -hmm. think it's pretty good that she overcame all that to like make a kind of I don't want to say career but you know, like she's a personality, and she's out there that like a lot of people are subscribed mm-hmm. to her on YouTube and stuff. And yeah. I think, given all the hate that she's uh, received and stuff, and the same for Jedward, like, uh, like I think they're annoying. But at the same time, if I saw them in public, I wouldn't just go, "Oh, there's those twats," like who, like, because they're younger than me. I just, I, I think it's kind of lame to, uh, you know, uh, throw all this hatred at people who are mm. just doing what the what the society has sort of you know decided is condition condition them to want to that's do. the word conditioned yeah exactly mm. i i just think that that's um that's something that i i think as well the media has a lot of responsibility to look after things like that and they don't mm. and, and like if, if like god forbid right but i kind of have this feeling that at some point an x-factor contestant is going to kill themselves i kind of feel like mm. that's the next step in yeah like in in allowing people like some people with fucking borderline mental health issues to come on TV and audition and then just laugh at them. Mm. Like, oh, yeah. something's going to give at some point. And I don't know. I just think that the media, like, I think we all have a responsibility to sort of just move out of this I'm better than you, like, bully type state and just mm. sort of accept things. Uh, having said that, though, if you want to send hate mail um, to anybody, send it to nickelback at gmail. <laughs> <laughs> There's some poor guy who just has Nickelback at Gmail, uh, and he must get inundated with hate mail. Like he's just a random bloke trying to get by with his life. It's a philosophical question, though, of like if you have Nickelback as your email address, do you really deserve to have an email address? No, I, I, I don't think you deserve to have a brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that like I I, I think like. In all fairness to, uh, like, I hate on Nickelback and Coldplay and, and bands like that a lot. And, uh, like, I know it's sort of hypocritical to say that, oh, well, you shouldn't, like, hate Rebecca Black. You should hate Nickelback. Like, I, I think that the Nickelback thing is just one of those things that's become a running joke. And yeah. I don't think that they're bothered by it. Like, they still have a hardcore no. fan base to look after them and stuff. You know, it's not, like, 90% yeah. hate or whatever. And it's, it's not like... Uh, it's not like I'm... 
it's not, it's not like I'm tweeting at them saying, "Hey, Nickelback, yeah, you should get you should get hit by a bus." That is another like, point. That's that's not what I'm saying. If we say the no one from Nickelback is going to listen to this and go, but these two got oh, <laughs> that, makes me, that makes me sad. Like that's not going to happen. Like you know. Whereas if you're directly tweeting a 15 year old girl in like in Rebecca Black telling her to kill herself, yeah, you know you're not like it's different from tweeting it in general and not at her. Yeah, especially to uh, like someone who doesn't have like a press agent or you know like a PR company mm. or, or any sort of thing that that can filter through. That goes straight to her phone, straight to mm. her eyes, and then straight to her head. And that just yeah, that, that's like I just think that's really bad form and like. Mm. Yeah, like we can sit here and discuss the the fact that you know objectively Friday is complete and utter garbage, but like mm. that's fine. But don't go sending like it's like, it is the same with me and and the Nickelback Coldplay thing. I'm not gonna tweet Coldplay mm. and say kill yourself, you cunt. Yeah. Although that does give me an idea for my next. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was something I just kind of wanted to get off my chest and in, in the mm. in the spirit of the guilty pleasure, I I I do sort of um detest that guilty pleasure has been applied to things that I don't really feel guilty for at all like my music mm. taste and, and movies and things like that so I, yeah. I think it was pretty good that we discussed things that I actually do feel guilty for likewise yeah, yeah fuck this I agree <laughs>